Hi everybody, I hope you're well. Today we'll read from a book titled Systematic Book Design by Jost Hochuli, published by B42. In the introduction, John Morgan wrote The more I practice, the less articulate I become. Or, more likely, I have less desire to be articulate about what I do. This is not a proud anti-intellectual stance. It is simply that the very things that interest me most about designing books are the things most difficult or impossible to describe. This territory is tacit knowledge, and the assertion is, we know more than we can tell. While this is not a great problem for a practitioner, though occasionally the designer may need to convince a skeptical commissioner, at which point uh, being able to put feelings into words uh, does become useful, for a teacher or a theorist of book design, it's the elephant in the room. Anyone who is a theorist alone or has little practical experience may be wondering what elephant. The key to acquiring tacit knowledge is experience. There are now many book design manuals and how-to books available to students. What's lacking is a poetics of book design that celebrates experience and emotion, but that would require a brave and foolhardy author. You can read these book design manuals studiously, follow advice and method, choose an appropriate format, set very readable text and yet still fail to capture the qualities that make a book work or feel right. If you find these words a bit woolly, rightness, feel, here are some more. Atmosphere, authenticity, presence, integrity. A more systematic mind may well ask, what do you mean exactly? Let's be careful. There's a danger of wrapping things up in elitist language with overtones of ghastly good taste that veers unsteadily towards phenomenology. Perhaps Eric Gill can ground us that if you look after goodness and truth, beauty will take care of itself. But whose truth and whose idea of beauty exactly? Yet I know it when I see it. I feel it in my bones. And that's enough for me. Jost Hochuli's text, Systematic Book Design, with the question implicit in its title, could be read as a postscript to his designing books, Practice and Theory. In this new work, Jost makes more explicit the unspoken message of the earlier text. By acknowledging the essential role that feelings and intuitions play in designing books and by talking about the messy reality of decision-making, he gets a little closer to describing the indescribable. It's instantly recognizable. A stiff, white envelope, modest but well-made and composed. Smaller than A4, bigger than A5 though proportionately significantly slimmer to that ruling standard. A Typotron booklet. If there's any doubt, I look to the sender's address. A single line set in universe, in a warm typographic red, more orange than red, with my name and address beautifully handwritten by somebody who cares and knows how letters are made. I pull out a jacketed single section sewn booklet. It feels so right, it can only be golden ratio in proportion. When lifting the jacket, I see not a staple, but a colored thread running through three holes. A combination of materials chosen quite deliberately, if not systematically. Many months ago, when I was 19 years old and the echoes of Swiss typography were still just about reverberating, I saw my first Typotron book. Consequently, St. Kallen and Jost began to take on a mythical status. I had a clear impression of the place, full of self-determining craftsmen and women. A place of culture where good work uh, was possible. A cell of good living. These booklets were an entry into another culture, both in content 
and production. This set of publications and Yost's uh, body of work presented an alternative view of Swiss typography. A convenient but inaccurate label personified by the likes of Emil Ruder, Max Bill and Josef Müller Brockmann, and suggestive of asymmetrical layout, sans serif type, a very present grid and an objective approach to designing. In the first book in the Typotron series, dedicated to Rudolf Hostetler, typographer and St. Gallen based editor in chief of uh, Typographische Monatblatter magazine, Jost introduced readers to a less celebrated Swiss typography lineage. But make no mistake, while there is no single ideology, there is clearly a set of principles and a system of good practice informing his work. Rigor and discipline, spoken in a language that is modest, unassuming and well-balanced, is fundamental. There is not a trace of irony, no knowing wink with a hooded eye, no big idea, no display behavior, as Jost referred to any exaggerated gestures of form in his essay, Book Design as a School of Thought. Instead, his work exhibits a self-control that resists these temptations and, dare I say it, a moral framework quite alien to our times. And what times are we in? Systems and conventional procedures are in place that promote books as either products or art objects. I feel neither category is applicable when I look at Yost's work. It's fashionable now to teach graphic design and typography as a purely autonomous activity. Engagement or dialogue with a commissioner or client, always a sleazy word, is often seen as a weakness, somehow an inauthentic activity. This results in many talented designers producing and publishing texts few people are interested in reading and a mode of practice that can only really be supported by teaching. But who can blame them? Why not work with and produce texts uh, for friends alone when faced uh, with the terrifying prospect at the other extreme of working in-house at a publishing agency, where the designer's role is at best misunderstood by editors and too often controlled by the marketing department with their dubious motives and understanding of the audience. Pure lack of interest in the book interior usually means more freedom for the typographer of continuous text. The editors, publishers and marketeers are now of a generation that is likely to be more familiar with bad practice, which has become the norm. What are the references? How will that situation get better? A young designer, lost and depressed in that world and looking for something solid to cling to, could start by looking at Yost's text for an armory of advice, good example and a way of working with integrity. For the more fortunate, and I count myself in that category, this feels like the optimum time to be making books. Though typically, as in many areas of life, the field of book design that values and can afford to employ designers is the area that perhaps needs uh, the least attention. The books being printed now need to demonstrate such strong materiality to differentiate themselves from their electronic counterparts that these materials can be emphasized to fetish territory, leaving us with overreach design heavy volumes. My usual relationship with this uh, typology of books extends to a two minute flick in a bookshop. Not entirely unenjoyable, but I will leave uh, feeling dissatisfied and a little guilty for being seduced uh, in the first place. Give me something worth reading. Many moons later, now old enough to know the difference between myth and reality, I made my way to St. Gallen, via work in Zurich, fortunate to consider Jost a colleague and friend. After dining with uh, Ursula and Jost at their home, we moved uh, to the studio library, with Hostetler, Kaflisch, Schichold, Frutiger, Koch and Renner for company. 
Short of time, I asked Yost to show me a single book he admired. He pulled out a book designed by Jan von Krimpen. I don't recall the details, but safe to say, a very elegant piece of symmetrical typography, a broad measure of a broad page, perhaps set in one of his own types, Romulus or Romane. We admired it and then Jost said, of course we can't make work like that anymore. These words struck me cold, straight to the core. I knew he was right, of course, but it was said with such belief and finality that any lingering possibility inside me was extinguished. Perhaps he wanted to make sure that I didn't misunderstand his admiration, to be clear that this was not a model to be faithfully copied. By saying this, Jost didn't mean that we didn't have the capabilities or necessary skills to do this. Rather, that it would be a misguided act of pastiche, or a more sinister parody, as out of time as walking down the street sporting a flannel suit and trilby. You would certainly get attention, but perhaps for reasons not intended. A hard-earned sense of history makes you more acutely aware of your own contemporaneity. The reasons for choosing a typeface are perhaps the least systematic in book design, and Yost's influence in my own selection is apparent. I owe to him, amongst uh, many other things, my predilection for the types of Bram de Duce, Trinité and Lexicon. They seem to me without posture or ironic reference. They are well drawn, inherently beautiful and of our time. Other Hochuli one-time favorites, uh, such as Baskerville, Bembo or Futura, I rarely use and could only choose them for emphatic or emotional effect, a self-aware act of irony or parody. Through time, these types have built up a paradoxical nature. They no longer represent what they once did. No doubt my feelings will change over time, but uh, with books we usually design for the long term, and it pays to make a decision you feel you can live with. Jost talks of feeling his way into a project, Kaflisch of conceiving it. The systematic decisions are configured around this conceived book. The imagined book comes first. The system follows and adapts. It seems to me I felt mostly, but not always. The book was designed in Paris by De Valence and printed in Italy by Musumeci. Ask for it at your local bookstore. Thank you for joining me today and see you in the next video. Bye.